Damaged and dysfunctional mitochondria are removed via the process of mitophagy, in which the kinase PINK1 accumulates on the outer mitochondrial membrane, leading to the recruitment and activation of the ubiquitin ligase PARKIN. PARKIN in turn ubiquitinates mitochondrial membrane proteins so that the damaged organelles can be recognised by the autophagy machinery, engulfed in double-membraned autophagosomes and delivered to lysosomes for degradation. As Richard Yule from the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke explains, mitophagy has mostly been studied using chemical agents that completely depolarize the mitochondrial membrane. But there has been doubt of whether mitochondria actually become depolarized in vivo, whether this reflects a physiological stress. The mitochondrial DNA becomes mutated as people age, and those mutations can lead to mitochondrial protein in the matrix that's misfolded. And we had noted in an earlier paper that one can express misfolded proteins in the mitochondrial matrix, and they would activate the pink one parkin pathway without depolarizing the membrane. But there was little known about how that would work. So the goal of this paper was to study this misfolded protein activation pathway and explore its mechanism of action. Delta OTC, a truncated version of the mitochondrial protein ornithine transcarbamylase, is selectively degraded by the autophagy machinery in a PINK1 and PARC independent manner. Yule and colleagues, led by Jonathan Berman, examine the localization of these proteins inside cells. I think that's one of the most interesting parts of the paper because John found that the misfolded protein forms aggregates within the mitochondria, and we saw Parkin would be recruited locally right where the protein aggregate is. And we found that PINK1 could accumulate in little spots, and we found that ubiquitin would accumulate in those same spots because ubiquitin is a product of Parkin activation. And we also found certain autophagy receptors such as opineurin that bind ubiquitin would localize at these spots. And if one follows these spots with time, occasionally you'd see Harkin bud off of the mitochondria with the unfolded protein in the bud. And also on occasion, we could catch DRP1, the mitochondrial fission protein, assembling at that bud site. DRP1-mediated fission is widely thought to divide mitochondria into fragments that can be easily engulfed by autophagosomes. Berman et al. found that blocking DRP1 function inhibited the budding of Parkin-labeled mitochondrial fragments. Surprisingly, though, loss of DRP1 did not inhibit the clearance of delta OTC by mitophagy. However, eliminating DRP1 reduce the selectivity. So in the wild type cell, the misfolded protein is eliminated, but not the bulk of the proteins. But in the absence of DRP1, the misfolded protein is still eliminated, but it takes a lot of the normal mitochondria with it. In fact, rather than being required for mitophagy, DRP1 seems to limit the process, as the overall rate of mitophagy was enhanced in the absence of this mitochondrial fission protein. In the wild type cells, Harkin would accumulate in these little spots along the mitochondria where the aggregates were. But in the absence of DRP, it would spread along the whole mitochondria. And even in cells that didn't express any misfolded protein experimentally, in a few DRP knockout cells, maybe 5-10% of the time, Harkin would be constitutively coating the very long mitochondria. But you, you never see that in wild type cells. Similarly, ubiquitin and the autophagy receptors P62 and optineurin spread along the length of mitochondria in the absence of DRP1, instead of being restricted to focal spots associated with protein aggregates as they are in wild-type cells. DRP1-mediated fission therefore appears to limit the spread of Parkin and restrict mitophagy to damaged regions of mitochondria, thereby sparing healthy regions of the organelle. 
Fission might break the positive feedback loop by which Pink One and Parkin amplify each other's recruitment to mitochondria, or perhaps a failure to selectively remove protein aggregates may eventually lead to a wholesale loss of mitochondrial function. But what do Yule and colleagues want to investigate next? When you depolarize mitochondria with a mitochondrial uncoupler, it's known that that inhibits Pink One import into the inner membrane and it accumulates coating the whole mitochondria. So what I believe is that protein aggregates are inhibiting pink one import locally, telling Parkin in the the cytosol where exactly there's debris accumulation on the inside. So the question then is, if that model is right, how do protein aggregates inhibit import locally? Another big question in my mind is, how does DRP1 recognize these sites where Parkin and ubiquitin are accumulating? I'm not sure we have any idea how that works. In the longer term, the researchers would like to identify compounds that stimulate this process, since the accumulation of misfolded proteins is thought to underlie a number of mitochondrial diseases. For now, though, You can learn more about how mitochondrial fission facilitates the selective mitophagy of protein aggregates in the paper by Berman et al., published in the October 2nd, 2017 issue of the Journal of Cell Biology.